Introduction to Using Bond Energies, Higher Content, by kscience.com When hydrogen reacts with chlorine, hydrogen chloride is formed. And the balance symbol equation for this chemical reaction is H2, G for gas, reacts with Cl2, G for gas, reacts to form HCl, G for gas. And we put a big 2 in front of the HCl to balance the equation. Now, because it only says H2 and there's no number in front of the H2, this means there's just one hydrogen molecule reacting. And this diagram represents the hydrogen molecule. And the same for Cl2. There's no number before it, so there's only one chlorine molecule reacting. And this is the chlorine molecule. Now, in front of the HCl, there's a big two. This tells us there are two hydrogen chloride molecules being produced represented by these two diagrams. Now we already know in any chemical reaction, in the reactants, the bonds are broken. Okay, so the bonds are always broken between the atoms in the reactants in any chemical reaction. And when forming new products, new bonds are made. So whenever products are made in any chemical reaction, new bonds are always made. And we already know again, when breaking bonds, energy is always taken in from the surroundings, represented by these arrows going in towards the box. So energy is taken in from the surroundings when breaking bonds. And when forming new bonds, energy is always released into the surroundings, represented by these arrows pointing outwards towards the surroundings. So energy is released into the surroundings when making new bonds. What we've just gone through forms the foundation of understanding how to use bond energies. Because the definition of a bond energy is the amount of energy needed to break one mole of a specific covalent bond. And the unit is kilojoules per mole. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So we've just gone through the definition of what a bond energy is, and this is the amount of energy needed to break one mole of a specific covalent bond, where the unit is kilojoules per mole. You need to be aware of common bond energies, where different bonds have very specific bond energies in kilojoules per mole. But don't worry, as you'll be given these in the exam for a specific question, so you do not need to learn these off by heart. You just need to know how to use them. This diagram represents a C-C bond, which is a single covalent bond between two carbon atoms. And if we want to break this bond, we need to know how much energy is required to break one mole of this bond. So all we do, we look in the table and we can see that this C-C bond requires 347 kilojoules per mole to break the bond. It's that simple. And then we're left with two carbon atoms. So what this means is 347 kilojoules per mole is taken in from the surroundings to break the C-C bond. Now let's say we have the two carbon atoms and they go on to have a bond formed where they form the C-C single covalent bond. The question is, how much energy is released into the surroundings as one mole of this bond is formed? Well, we go to the table and we see the CC single covalent bond and we can see it says 347 kilojoules per mole. This is how much energy is released into the surroundings. So what this means is 347 kilojoules per mole is released into the surroundings when the CC bond is formed. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. So here's the equation showing how hydrogen reacts with chlorine to form hydrogen chloride. 
This imaginary one in front of the H2 can be interpreted as either one mole of hydrogen molecules or just one hydrogen molecule. And we can also see how there is one mole of chlorine molecules or one molecule of chlorine. And the two can be interpreted as either being two moles of hydrogen chloride molecules or two molecules of hydrogen chloride. And finally, these diagrams represent hydrogen, chlorine and hydrogen chloride. Focusing on hydrogen now, to break this single covalent bond, we're told that 436 kilojoules per mole is taken in from the surroundings to break one mole of this bond. And focusing on chlorine now, to break this single covalent bond, 346 kilojoules per mole is taken in from the surroundings to break one mole of this bond. Another way of wording this is 436 kilojoules is needed to break one mole of hydrogen bonds. And also 346 kilojoules is needed to break one mole of chlorine bonds. Now hydrogen chloride is a little different. So when forming these new bonds, 432 kilojoules per mole is released into the surroundings when forming the single covalent bond between hydrogen and chlorine in each hydrogen chloride molecule. The big two in front of the HCl tells us there are two moles of hydrogen chloride reacting. And because we're given the data of 432 kilojoules per mole, we have to do 432 times 2, which equals 864 kilojoules per mole as there are two moles of hydrogen chloride being produced. So 864 kilojoules per mole is released when two moles of HCl are formed. In the next video, we're going to go through how to use these bond energies to calculate the energy transferred in a chemical reaction to understand if this reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com for more videos, worksheets, and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.